All right, what's going on friends? In this video, I'm gonna be going over how to install a bathroom in your basement if you have no plumbing in your floor. So I'm gonna be installing an up flush toilet. And in this bathroom, because this is what my wife wanted, we're gonna put a utility sink. And eventually I'm gonna put a 36 by 36 inch shower. This is probably gonna be a series of three, maybe even four videos. So, and I will try to put down in the timeline when you're watching the video, I will put different chapters so you can skip ahead. If you do not wanna watch a section of this video, I'm gonna give you, try to give you as many tips and tricks as I can. All right, my first step I, that I did when I was planning this bathroom was, if you don't know what size to make your bathroom, just get on the internet, search basement bathroom layouts, like the smallest size or like, like that's what I went with. I was trying to find like, the, like a nice size. I didn't want it too small and like cramped, but I didn't want to take a lot of space up here in my basement because I wanted more of the space for the storage and like our little family room we have. So that's how I come up with my layout of my bathroom. Your layout does not have to be exactly like this. And you'll see maybe, you might see in the video, my camera's shining through it, or my camera is videoing through my doorway right now. And I did put a little 45 degree. I'll show you here in my plans. So I searched up to see what sizes you could have. I think this is like a, I think it's nine by six. I think it's nine way, nine foot this way and six foot wide. And that did get me a nice, like a 36 by 36 shower. You could go with a smaller shower, but I didn't want a real small shower. And I have this utility sink. All right, so first I searched up and I found what size I wanted to make my bathroom. And all you gotta do is, like I said, when you do that, if you usually just click on images, you'll see a whole bunch of different pictures come up on the internet, and it's gonna give you an idea of maybe what you would wanna do, and then you could change it a little bit here or there. Then I drew a drawing, and I drew this to scale. The scale of my drawing, you can make yours whatever you want, but it fit right on this normal piece of paper. My scale is like one inch equals a foot. Now, if you're draw drawing up your drawing, it's really nice to make it to scale so you can see how everything is gonna sit and how everything's gonna be laid out in your bathroom. Now, if you don't also don't know like code to like how much space you're gonna need for your toilet, you can also look that up and just type in um, spacing code for a toilet and you'll come up with some answers on the internet. I think I could go smaller than this, but it did say from what I, when I did some research, which made sense to me, from the center of my toilet to like a wall, it says recommended one foot six inches. And then so I have from the center of my toilet over to when I open this bifold door for this closet, I also have like one foot six inches to where the door opens up. So that's a little bit on planning your bathroom. All right, in this video, we're gonna be doing some tile work. So I'll give you a little bit of tips on tile. I'm going to do some drywall. I'm going to do a little bit of electrical and definitely got to do some plumbing. I think that'll be the biggest of these three or four videos that I'm going to make on this bathroom. And maybe I'll even trim my beard. My beard does match this gray hat though. I got to put my hat on backwards so you guys can see my face. All right. Now, if you're building your bathroom and you're like, you're, you're at the spot where I'm at, where you have studs, and all you have is studs. So the next thing we're gonna have to do will be plumbing and electrical. Then I'm gonna do my drywall. Then I'm gonna do my tiles. And then we can install the sink and toilet. All right, here's my first tip. When you're hanging drywall and you wanna try to find like this box right here, at least this is one of the ways that I do it. Just take some of your wife's old mascara or whatever this stuff's called, or just get some old red lipstick you just take a little bit of that and you put it on all the corners. Just like that. And then you put your piece of drywall up there. Take another box. Stick it up against the marks. Better off using the exact same type of box. This is a little bit thinner than the one I have on the wall, but draw it out. Just 
take your multi-tool and cut it out. Then you can take your drywall, put it in place. There you have it. All right, so far I got my inch and a half vent in for my up flush toilet. If you're putting in a Santa flush up flush toilet, just like I am, you're gonna need an inch and a half vent. And you can't use a Studer vent. I'll put a picture of one of them here on the screen. You cannot use a vent like that. The vent has to be able to, to let air go out and let air come in. Now I gotta work on my hot and cold water lines for my utility sink and I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna tee off of one of them lines and it's gonna come over here for my up flush toilet. All right, if your basement's anything like mine, I seem to have a lot of water lines in my ceiling here. So a good way to try to figure out which one is hot or cold, either you can trace it from your hot water tank but if it seems like it's a little bit harder to trace from your hot water tank, you can also just go, whatever this hot water line or cold water line is going to, go, like I went in my tub, because I know these ones go to my tub, and I turned on the hot water just to make sure this one was for the hot water right here. And this, then I turned on the cold just to double check, and this line right here was cold. So I'm gonna drill a couple holes up through there. Seventy-five inches. Any of the tools I'm using in this video, I'm going to try to put down in the description in case you guys want to check them out. These don't cost that much, but if you're doing something like this, or even PEX piping, it's real easy to cut it. All right, I got, I got my drywall. It's almost an eight foot piece of drywall. I got that in here. When I start hooking up my cold water and hot water lines, I have to turn all my water off to get all that hooked up. And then I have to get the drywall on before I put my valves on. So I decided to get my drywall and at least get the vent cut out and this receptacle cut out. And that way I'll have at least them two things cut out. And then when I have them holes done, then all I'll have to do is my three water lines. My one water line for my up flush and my hot and cold for my utility sink. I just wanted to let you guys know that just in case you come across something like this. I'm sure the professionals out there would probably do this all in one shot, but when you don't do this every day for a living, you might be a little slower at it. All right, there you go. I got those two cut out. Now I can move on to my water lines and then I'll have to line them up also. Just so I don't forget, unless I already said that in this video, don't forget to mark out where your studs are. I put a little X there, X there, X there. It makes it a lot easier for when you go to screw up your drywall so you know where your studs are at. I can see my studs up here at the top, but I won't be able to see it at the bottom. All right, it's the next day now. That's why I'm in different clothes. I just got back from church and I have a little change in plans and I wanna talk a little bit more about drywall. I guess the first thing is if, if you have a wife or if you're the wife and you're doing the, and you're doing the bathroom, you have a husband make sure you talk to your husband or talk to your wife about the plans on doing your bathroom my wife tells me today that she doesn't she, she just wants shelves in here not a closet so i'll explain to you why i would have probably done things a little different but since i already put my one piece of drywall in and i cut around this box and i cut around this vent i don't really want to go buy a whole another piece of drywall or patch up those two holes the eight foot sections of the drywall are a lot easier to mud. So if you can have less sections of the ends to mud when you're putting your tape on and throwing your mud down, it's a lot easier. So I laid mine down long ways here because you could take your drywall and lay it going up and down if you want. It does not really matter. But if I would have put all them all up and down, I would have had all the mud and would have been a lot easier other than maybe if you consider the corners hard. The corners may be a little, little trickier. But now I had 
my closet's going to be over here at this corner and I was going to, the end of my drywall was going to be in that corner. So I wasn't too worried about that end of the drywall. I was just going to mud that and just, and it didn't have to be perfect because it was going to be covered up with my closet, at least for me anyway. I, I wasn't going to mat or wasn't going to worry about that so much. But now that closet's not going to be there because she said she just wants like maybe four or five shelves there that we can put towels on. So now I'm going to have to be a little pickier at that end when I mud that. No big deal. I'm just letting you guys know. Maybe plan ahead a little better than I did. As much planning as I made for this. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. And I did get some of these little safety, metal safety pieces that I'm going to put over like this, right over where my PVC is. So that way I don't accidentally ever stick a screw into that water line that's in my wall because then you'll have a mess. And you'll stick a screw in there and you may not know till a day or two later that you got water dripping all over in the inside of your wall. So problem is I have to be careful on the other side and I don't really plan on ripping all that drywall out. So I'll have to remember, at least I'll have it on one side. All right, let me go get changed and then I'll get back to working. All right, if I didn't tell you, I got this purple drywall because this is for moisture. If you're putting a bathroom in, you're gonna want purple. If you're putting it in your basement, you're also probably gonna want this. Just get the moisture resistant drywall. And another thing, some of this drywall does come with these little X's on. That'll also help you line up your studs. And like I said, don't forget to put a little X on the floor so you know where your stud is at the bottom. And then another tip I have is I have this little bit on here just has a Phillips head on it, but it has this little cover that it only lets me screw the screw in so far because you don't want to screw your screw in that drywall too far. You just want to go in. You don't want to rip right through that paper. Let me show you. Now this one's actually right on. If you lay these out right and it's 16 inches on the center, sometimes it does lay right on a X. Oh, and then you can also put, some people will put like, four screws across. Some people might put five screws up and down. I'm just putting four. I think that's enough. See, and it only puts it in just far enough. All right, when you use that bit and you get that screw in just right, you shouldn't be able to hear that screw. You don't want that screw sticking out too far either. Like this, I'll show you. Sorry if I'm young because I have hearing protection in. Right there, can you hear that? You don't want to hear that. So you want to go in just a little bit further. All right, I don't hear that. All right, now my next tip is I'm gonna go out in my garage, I'll show you how I cut this. All right, if this is your first time drywalling, you just went and bought your drywall, a lot of times they'll help you stack it in your truck and they're normally gonna come, if you're buying at least two sheets of drywall, they'll come stacked together. Now these are connected. You just grab a hold of that little tab, and you pull on it, and there's a, usually a piece of cardboard on there. It should rip right across. Just like that. Now I'm gonna have to climb up in my truck and rip the other side loose. Ugh. All right, now for my tip on how I cut it. I need a piece 73 and a half, so I'll measure across. 73 and a half, and if you don't have like a big drywall square like this, you might have to measure 73 and a half on cup, both on the, like the top and the bottom and just draw a line. Now I'm gonna cut this a couple times I'm sure the professional guys do that once and they're done, but you don't do this all the time. I used to be better at that because I did do this almost every day years ago. I can walk around the back side here. I'll cut myself. Just grab a hold of that and kick that a little bit. Snaps 
right in half. And you just cut that. Just like that. And I gotta use that piece on the other side. So there's my other piece that has to go to the on the top of the other drywall. Now I gotta go in there and measure how what the height of it is. I can't put another four foot piece on. Now a tip on how I cut it when I have to cut the length wise. Now I measured I needed 38 and a half. So I measured on the one side 38 and a half and I put a mark there. And I did the same thing over here, 38 and a half, put a mark right here. Then this is just how I do it. Back in the day when I was doing this all the time, I know you fancy drywallers will just take your knife. If you get good at this, you can try this. You can stick your tape measure out to there, right where that mark's at. You take your knife, stick it on that mark, and you can run down here like this, all the way across. It's a lot easier if it's up off the ground. But if you don't do this all the time, just I take a chalk line my chalk line and snap me a line. There, yeah. Just about out of chalk. And I just cut it. Now another another thing I'm going to tell you right now, just so I don't forget to tell you when I get inside, is that side is going to go, that's going to get laid on that other piece of drywall I put on the wall. Because these edges are tapered, like I said. So you want the tapered side against the tapered side. I don't want to put this side I just cut against the tapered side because then it's going to make it a pain in the butt to mud. So you got two tapers, you put both the tapers together. So that side is going to lay on the other piece of drywall. Now, all right. And also keep watching, I'm going to show you another way that, that I cut around outlet boxes. All right, another thing I did, I don't know if you noticed it, and I don't know if you have to. Let me know down in the comments if you also do something like this. I took this little thin piece of wood, it's maybe about almost a quarter inch thick. Nowadays they don't make nothing quarter inch. Yeah, it's close to a quarter inch, a little less. It's a piece of Luon, and I stuck that down. Maybe if you have something like an eighth inch thick, just something thin. I don't like putting my drywall right on the concrete, especially in a basement or maybe even out in your garage. But that's just what I did. I don't know if you have to do that, so put that down in the comments. And if you have any other tips or tricks, put them down in the comments. If you like this video so far and you're learning anything from it, please give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to help support my channel. All right, another thing, before you put that piece of drywall up on top of this one, the one that is right over top of all your, all your water lines, I recommend take a flashlight and double check down behind the wall, make sure nothing is leaking. I pray and hope, I pray to God that nothing is leaking, because if it is, you're gonna have to take this drywall back off and redo what you just did. So you just look down in the wall. Now I've already done this a couple times, and look down and check to make sure nothing's leaking. I hope everything turned out good for you.